Hello Grade 11s and welcome to another lesson on probability. In this lesson we will show you how to use Venn diagrams to solve probability problems. First, a reminder of what a Venn diagram is. A Venn diagram is a visual representation of given information. For the purposes of probability, we use Venn diagrams to represent a sample space and its events. This Venn diagram shows two mutually exclusive events, A and B. The rectangle shows the sample space and all events in the experiment. The fact that the circles do not overlap tells us that the events are mutually exclusive and cannot take place at the same time. Therefore, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. This Venn diagram shows events that intersect. If the events are not mutually exclusive, then the two circles will overlap. The shaded area is called the intersection and shows where the events A and B take place at the same time. We write this as A intersection B or A and B. The union of A and B is an event that consists of all outcomes that are in A or B. We write the union as A union B or as A or B. To make this a little easier to understand, let's compare the Venn diagram to a married couple. The couple is in union with each other and that is why the union includes both of the full circles and the part where they intersect. The intersection of the circles shows the hobbies and interests they have in common. Events are said to be exhaustive if together they cover all of the elements of the sample space. Mutually exclusive exhaustive events are called complementary events. Let me show you what a complementary event looks like on a Venn diagram. Remember, we denote the complement of A as A prime or not A. The shaded region in the Venn diagram tells us we are looking for all outcomes not present in the event A. Now that we've revised the basic Venn diagrams, let's use this knowledge to do an example. There are 220 members in a sports club. 160 play soccer, 110 play cricket, and 70 play both soccer and cricket. Draw a Venn diagram to illustrate the information given. Calculate the probability that a member chosen at random plays soccer or cricket. Calculate the probability that a member chosen at random plays one of these two sports. Calculate the probability that a member chosen at random plays both sports. Let S be the event members who play soccer and let C be the event members who play cricket. Let's draw the outline of our Venn diagram. A rectangle to include all outcomes in the sample space Circle S for soccer and circle C for cricket. We know that there are some members that play both sports, so the circles must intersect. We are told that 160 members play soccer and 70 play both soccer and cricket. Therefore, we know that 90 members of 160 only play soccer. We write this in the circle S. The other 70 play both soccer and cricket. We write this in the overlap of the two circles. Of the 110 people who play cricket, 70 play both sports. Therefore, only 40 play only cricket. So write that in circle C. You will notice that if you add up all the numbers in your sample space, you don't get the total number of 220 members. That means that we have left some members out. Those members are the ones who do not play soccer or cricket. We need to show this in our Venn diagram. We have 200 members represented in our diagram. So 20 members do not play either of these sports. We write this outside of the circles and within the sample space. Now we can use the Venn diagram to answer the other questions. Part B asked us to calculate the probability that a member chosen at random plays soccer or cricket. Since there is an overlap of the events, the probability of playing soccer or cricket is equal to the probability of playing soccer 
plus the probability of playing cricket minus the probability of playing both. The probability of playing soccer is 160 over 220. The probability of playing cricket is 110 over 220. And the probability of playing both is 70 over 220. The probability of playing soccer or cricket is equal to the probability of playing soccer plus the probability of playing cricket minus the probability of playing both. So we get 200 over 220. Now let's answer part C of the question. Calculate the probability that a member chosen at random plays only one of these two sports. This means the person either only plays soccer or only plays cricket. This excludes the intersection and the 20 club members who play neither. So the probability of only playing one sport out of soccer or cricket equals the probability of playing soccer plus the probability of playing cricket. This is 90 over 220 plus 40 over 220, which gives us 130 over 220. Part D asks us to calculate the probability that a member chosen at random plays both sports. We can read this straight from the Venn diagram. 70 people play both sports. So the probability that a member plays both sports equals 70 over 220. We are going to look at one more example. This time, there are three events that we have to work with. Why don't you try this one on your own first? At Cool School, there are 160 grade 11 learners. A survey was conducted to see how many languages, other than English, pupils could speak. 93 spoke Zulu, 75 spoke Afrikaans, and 62 spoke Sesotho. 15 spoke all three languages, 44 spoke Zulu and Afrikaans, and 23 spoke Sesotho and Afrikaans. 18 spoke Sesotho only. Use a Venn diagram to calculate the probability that a learner chosen randomly can speak Zulu and Sesotho but not Afrikaans, none of these languages, Afrikaans only. The best way to do this question is to start with the intersection of all three languages and work outward, filling in the Venn diagram as we go. But first, let's sketch the Venn diagram. Let Z be the event that a learner speaks Zulu. Let S be the event that the learner speaks Sesotho. And let A be the event that a learner speaks Afrikaans. Now we draw a rectangle to enclose the sample space and three circles to represent each language. The circles overlap as some learners speak more than one language. There are 15 learners that speak all three languages. Therefore, Z intersection S intersection A equals 15. Next, we are given that 44 pupils speak Afrikaans and Zulu, but this includes the 15 pupils that speak all three languages. So we subtract 15 from 44 to get 29 pupils who speak Zulu and Afrikaans, but not Sesotho. We put that into a Venn diagram, where Z and A intersect. 23 learners speak Sesotho and Afrikaans, but this includes the 15 that speak all three languages. So once again, we subtract to get 8 pupils that speak Afrikaans and Sesotho. We fill this in on the Venn diagram, where A and S intersect. We just have one more intersection to fill in. Those pupils that speak Zulu and Sesotho, but not Afrikaans. We know that 62 people speak Sesotho, and we need to calculate how many speak Zulu and Sesotho. So we need to subtract those who speak all three languages, those who speak Sesotho and Afrikaans, and finally, those who speak Sesotho only. And we get 21. So we put in 21 in the intersection between Z and S. Now that we have all the intersections, we can fill in the rest of the sample space in the Venn diagram. 
from the 93 learners that speak Zulu, we need to subtract 15 that speak all three languages, 21 that speak Zulu and Sesotho, and 29 that speak Zulu and Afrikaans. So we get 28 learners who speak Zulu only and fill this into our Venn diagram in circle Z. We were given that 18 learners speak Sesotho only, so we can put that into the diagram as well. Finally, we were told 75 learners speak Afrikaans. So we subtract the 15 that speak all three languages, 29 that speak Afrikaans and Zulu, and 8 that speak Afrikaans and Sesotho, to get 23 pupils who speak Afrikaans only. We fill that into the diagram. Remember they told us that there are 160 learners in this grade. And if we add up all the languages represented in the sample space so far, we will get 142. So that means 18 learners do not speak any of these three languages. We put that 18 outside of the circles and within the rectangles of the sample space. Now we are ready to answer the questions. The first question asks us to calculate the probability that a learner chosen randomly could speak Zulu and Sesotho, but not Afrikaans. From the Venn diagram, we see that the intersection between Z and S and not A is 21. Therefore, the probability of Z and S and not A is 21 over 160. Next, we need to calculate the probability that a randomly chosen learner speaks none of these languages. We saw previously that 18 learners do not speak any of the three languages. Therefore, the probability that a learner speaks no other language is 18 over 160, which simplifies to 9 over 80. Now for the last question. We have to calculate the probability that a learner chosen randomly can speak Afrikaans only. Let's look at the Venn diagram. There are 23 learners that speak Afrikaans only. So the probability that a learner chosen randomly can speak Afrikaans only is 23 over 160. As you can see, if you complete the Venn diagram accurately, it becomes easy to just read off your answers to probability questions. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Using Probability Task video. You'll also be able to learn more about probability on our website, www.mindset.co.za. We'll talk more about it when we meet again. Goodbye.